Hello, most patient people. Thank you. Thank you for your kind patience. Um, Woohoo! Mercury retrograde. Let's go. Um, <laughs> hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Tish Hicks. I'm the Master Sensei here at the VO Dojo in Burbank, California. And this is our free monthly Q&A call called Ask the Sensei. Um, I am joined here by Kelsey V, who is our amazing dojo team. And we're super excited to, um, basically how this goes is each month I'm here uh, joined by one of my esteemed and inspiring voiceover colleagues. Um, and we're here to answer your questions. So um, every one of us, no matter where we are on our journey, um, probably has something that's like, what about this? Or what's the next thing? Or I'm thinking about this. So what we're here to do is uh, spend at least the next hour and maybe a little bit over since we're starting so bloody late um, uh, to, to be here to answer those questions um, and keep you moving forward in your career and, um, and keep on getting you the answers that you need to keep moving forward. So um, we are super excited to welcome Kyle Chappell. He is really... Um, one of my favorite people in in voiceover. Um, uh, I, I'm I'm trying to think of the image. Kyle is like uh, the cool mountain lion of voiceover. Like he's there. He's awesome, cool when you sight him. It's really great, um, and he's really powerful and really, really knows and loves this business and and lives and breathes this business. Um, so it's great that we get get some time with the with the elusive uh, elusive and amazing, inspiring Kyle. So welcome, welcome, Kyle. Thank you for being here with us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, hopefully, uh, everyone got a um, everyone got a uh, uh, link to the twenty one Bio Dojo twenty one questions interview that we do before this. It's a great um, great way to hear um, our guests' origin stories, basically. And one of the reasons that I love doing this is no matter where you are on your journey, understanding that we are all on the journey, baby. And we all started somewhere and we are all continuing to go somewhere. So if you haven't had a chance to check that out, um, we'd love to hear where you are, um, where you are physically, where are you located? And then also where are you on your journey? Um, are you just starting out? Have you done some training? Do you have your demos? Are you represented? Just how, however you articulate that, we'd love to hear in the chat. And then, um, Kyle, we'd love to hear, like, if you can introduce yourself a little bit, and then um, what we're going to do is, um, if you can put, if, if uh, people who are here with us, if you can put your questions in the chat, and then we'll call you in and get your voice in the room. So, um, yeah, so Kyle, tell us a little, tell us your, tell us your, I don't know, it doesn't have to be elevator pitch, but mm -hmm. give us a little insight into who you are and what you're up to. So, uh, yeah, I, this is what I do full time. I'm in my booth right now. This is mostly where I record unless I actually have to leave the house. Um, I've been doing voiceover full time since 2014. Uh, I've, I, I guess I should mention what I booked. <laughs> um, yeah, a, a few things, a couple of things. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, there's the most recent season of uh, hit monkey like i have a couple characters in there uh if you've seen grimsburg which came out a couple months ago um or a few months ago yeah i was in that uh in a few episodes um there's a doordash commercial out there there should be some honda commercials out there <laughs> something with salesforce something with asana uh i did something for the one percent club but i'm not sure it aired but i got paid <laughs> That's the and you were, part. you were just mentioning I, I just asked as we were um figuring out what, what the heck was going on here um if kyle has done political work you just mentioned something that had come if you if you oh, can share right. that yeah. Um, yeah i did something for biden's campaign 
because he's out of the race, I guess, you know, residuals just play there. <laughs> there they go. So. <laughs> um, hey, Kyle, can you um turn your gain up just a yeah, little yeah, bit? You got it. Thank you. Oh, why was it so low? Okay, there we go. That was... Yeah. <laughs> I was screaming for a project earlier. Oh. <laughs> good. Okay. Hopefully not screaming out of frustration that we can. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> the good kind of screaming. It's the ones that get you paid. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, like uh, my career is predicated on, you know, being versatile. So I, I, I try to book in every area, animation, video game, commercial, whatever like i mean you, you give it to me like i'll try to book that thing um mm -hmm. i mean obviously there's look there's always something that a voice actor isn't really good at or doesn't book a lot um but i i really i try to book everything like i want a piece of everything <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i think that that more and more is kind of how the building a sustained successful voiceover yeah. career goes i think it i think it might have like in like in on camera, it used to be, oh, I'm just a commercial or I'm, I'm just a commercial actor. I'm just a TV actor. I'm just a mm -hmm. voiceover actor. I'm just a film actor. And now everybody needs to kind of be able to be flexible and open and understand the difference in the mediums and how we how we can be working in all of them at the same time. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. We talk about the diversified portfolio here at the at the dojo. Um, great if you want to do that how can you right. make a living doing that um yeah good 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 well um so yeah why don't we i don't see uh if you guys have put questions in the chat um but maybe i'm missing something uh yeah, what uh, what questions what questions do you guys have? What what's something that's happening in your voiceover career that um, that you're like, ooh, if I had the answer to that, um, that would be moving me forward. Steve asks, what are some of your tips for vocal health, like vocal warm up tips and tricks that you might do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, warm ups, nothing. <laughs> stumble out um, of bed <laughs> right <laughs> um actually i'm more reactive than proactive i probably should be more proactive um there's this tea called throat coat you should definitely look into throat coat um usually if i feel any kind of cold coming on immediately i hit it with vitamin d zinc i eat something fermented like sourdough bread um mm -hmm. and uh uh, uh oh, what am I uh, the, uh vitamin C zinc and uh vitamin D those mm -hmm. three things usually um help you recover very very quickly um so I'm more reactive than proactive I should be proactive but I'm more reactive uh so throat coat vitamin C vitamin D and uh zinc and eat something mm -hmm. fermented so if you if you feel if you feel something coming on you yeah are, if you yeah. It, just even the slightest thing i mean just mm -hmm. get some vitamin c in you right away like that that'll knock it out yeah um and and for me you know i think i think sometimes um sometimes when you're uh well it's important to it's important to do to do to have a routine and have something that you do every day i think sometimes when we're in the flow of like Okay, I've got so many auditions. But da, 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 da. we're just we're just we're we're doing it by doing it. Um, I don't have them with me, but I have these beautiful um, um, these beautiful um, little uh, gl blown glass straws for straw phonation. That's right. Yeah. Um, that helps me a lot. Um, <clears throat> I'm I'm having a little bit of a little bit of something something this morning. Um, and I've been I've been dealing with something that has been impacting my throat a little bit, so I've been staying really really hydrated uh, with um, um, electrolytes. So first of all, of that, but the straw phonation is great. We can do a we can do a, a fake a, 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 not fake but impromptu an impromptu one. 
So if you put your if you put your fingers together like this, and then hum into it like you're you're doing a kazoo. Well, actually, first put your voice into the room. We don't need to hear it, but you hear your voice, and notice where it is. Mine is. Um, I was saying this at a class the other day. Um, my first opera teacher, Joe Burke, was a wonderful man from Alabama, a rotund man from Alabama. And he was the only person who called me Letty because my full name is Letitia. But he would say, Letty, the voice is tired today. And I'd be like, yes, Joe, I know this. Um, so I can feel that the voice is tired today um, <coughs> and a little goobery. So I'm feeling that. So get a get a base base of where your voice is before we do this and then notice after. So um, all you have to do is put this together as if you're blowing into a kazoo. You can do this with a, with a straw, a small straw or um, anything, but but blow into it and actually hum into it. Like uh, the national anthem is a good thing to do. So I'm gonna just do that. It's very gentle. And let's see where my voice is now. Hmm. It feels a little, it feels a little bit different. It feels like it's coming together a little bit. It feels like a little bit better placed. It's a little bit more forward. It's a little smoother. Um, yeah, so that that straw phonation is a really good just like no brainer um, in terms of, of warm ups. Um, straw phonation really does help with um after you scream as well if yeah. you're if you have a shouting session mm -hmm. that that really helps because I, I think i saw something on youtube where your your vocal cords look like this and one of them will end up looking <laughs> like this. and when you do strophination like they get tight like right where they should be again something like that mm -hmm. um but yeah. but it, it it works it helps um yeah. Usually, I, I'll take the long straw and I'll I'll uh, I'll do what you just did, but I'll do scales da 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 like that. Um, so you could do that into your straw and like uh, in some water, and yeah, that'll help uh those vocal cords. That really helps like when you scream. If you have any shouting sessions, definitely keep that handy. Yeah. And if anybody is going to one voice this weekend, um, take very good care of your voice because the the very paradoxical thing is um, voice conferences, voice people come together and then jack up their voices <laughs> from talking too much and staying up too late. And yeah, so um, well, hopefully that's helpful, Steve. Let us know if, if there's other things that you had concerns about. Um, we also work with our vocal sensei, Faith Rumor, who is um, kind of a sextuple threat. She's a, a singer songwriter, voice, like singing voice coach, vocal coach, A list, um, A list, um, uh, what is a dialect specialist. Um, she has a background in, um, in uh, um, uh, therapy, vocal therapy and um like speech therapy and she's also um an acting coach so she's part of she's part of our team and um part of our, our curriculum as well um recently i just completed well i didn't complete it but i've advanced through a class on stand-up comedy mm -hmm. and this is a retirement career for me so i'm not as aggressive as other people are about, you know, really getting out there in the stand-up comedy clubs. But the thing is, in the class, he really teaches you how to think and how to present yourself better, um, even if it's just a basic conversation that you're having. So mm -hmm. I progressed to the point where I did a submission, and it's, you know, it's humorous. And I asked him what else I could do with this besides be a stand-up comic, and we discussed different options like comedy podcasts and special interest groups. And I was wondering if you had um, any strategy that you would recommend that, you know, would make it easier for me to contact these people. Because I think some of them actually go through um, agencies and that's not always readily apparent. Yeah. Um, 
Well, in terms of knowing the stand-up world and the comedy world, um, I'm not really familiar with how that works. I know people who are and can put you in touch with them. The thing, okay. the thing that I'm always interested in, uh, the, same here, by the, the way. Yeah, the the cross section that I'm always intrigued by with comedy is particularly stand up. First of all, I think anyone who does stand up, um, particularly for a living, and even does what you're doing, um, Alina, go out and venture into it is super brave, like a, a Olympic oh. level brave. <laughs> and the things. You know, the things that that I'm always interested at the dojo is like, how do we take all these different things and bring them into this medium? And the thing that I found with getting to work with stand ups and people who do comedy is to put together a set. You have to find your voice. You have mm -hmm. to know what your voice is, what your your funny is. I think for everyone to be able to find their funny and know that they're funny and know why they're funny and how they're funny and when they're funny is super important in everything that we do as voiceover artists. You have to have a sense of your humor and you have to be able to tune into the copywriter's sense of humor. So um, I think the more experience and then going out on stage is just the most to do stand up is the most raw balls out way that you can do that it either works or it doesn't work and then you know something um and you get you get brave in in trusting your voice and and continuing to hone your funny um so those would be the things that i would say like yay and brave and true um i'm happy to connect you with people i know who know yeah. more. and um that would be nice yeah yeah any other thoughts kyle or who to contact when it comes to uh like comedy is that your yeah, question and, yeah and, yeah and or if there's anything about you know the idea of comedy or how stand-up could relate to the work that you do or how it can serve people comedy relates because there are auditions that say um uh please uh please make sure you have comedians submit for this or mm -hmm. uh, please make sure you have improv actors submit for this. Um, because there are, you know, there's there's uh, scripts that have, you know, dialogue that's supposed to be funny. and But they want, you know, a voice actor to come in and, and jazz it up a little bit, you know, and mm -hmm. say something funny or improvise some lines. Um, like if I were to give you the line, uh, may maybe a writer has like a couple lines like, uh, um, the peanut butter tastes good, you know, like how, how would you say that three different ways? Or is there, can you give us this in three different ways? Is there three different ways that you could say that the peanut butter tastes good? You know, so the, that's where that skill can help. And and I also look at every skill is like the Batman utility belt. You know, mm -hmm. Batman has everything for every situation. Like, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter what he's in. He can, pull out that particular thing for this particular scenario. So you you want it in your utility belt and always go into every audition, every session with your utility belt on. Everything that you've ever learned might mm. be useful in that particular situation. Because you have directors who are not very good, and some who are very <laughs> good, some, you know, so it, it, it's definitely helpful. But um, I know a couple people that could probably help you uh, get started in comedy if that's what you're looking for but it definitely applies well to it's voiceover. to find yeah it's to find the comedy podcast because you know i did the audio mm -hmm. and that's really you know as a retiree the way that i would like to pursue it is just you know whatever can be done be done online yeah well i mean i think you know i think more now more than ever like if you look at someone like matt rife who is an, an experienced an experienced comedian who took all of that what you're supposed to do and then hit it hit it on you know just putting it out into the world um you know i think i think there's even paradigm shifts happening within the comedy world um yeah i would i would you know i would do the the basics what are comedy podcasts mm -hmm. 
Um, you might even, you know, uh, my, this is where my brain goes. And this is, this is where I always think, you know, sometimes I think as artists, we get we we sometimes get fed this line or we buy into that business is not creative which is super wrong business is equally creative as be as doing the work we're doing as artists it's just um how we how we think of it and how we apply it so this is where my creative brain goes like i don't know what's the question well where, where are the comedy, how do I get onto pod, comedy podcast to get my particular brand of retired mm -hmm. um, humor? So then I go like, uh, okay, well, where are podcasts in general? Where are comedy co podcasts? Um, which ones do I like? Uh, like which ones kind of suit? Um, I would, you know, my brain would go like, well, probably, I mean, I don't know your sense of humor. I could make assumptions like, oh, it's retired humor. So it may or may not, you know, I guess my brain goes like, well, maybe dry bar comedy as, you know, a place of finding out who are those people? Do they have podcasts? But I don't know, maybe you have raunchy, like dirty, maybe you have <laughs> dirty, 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 um, no. <laughs> and that is, that is your experience in which case you go somewhere else. Right. Um, and then, um, and that, you know, ha what, what happens if I put something out myself? Like, I'll just put it out there and see who responds. So this is where like my, my brain goes creativity wise. Ooh, let's play. And then the other thing that just came into my brain was, I don't know, who do you like? And then write to them and say, hey, would you, would you be available to ask some questions? Or are you available to mentor me or something like that? Put yourself out there and say, hi, I'm interested in this. Um, you know, in it, are you available to talk more or it, you know, would I, would you be available if I never say pick your brains unless you are a zombie of the apocalypse. If you are a zombie of the apocalypse, then say that to somebody and people will probably have the same response. Even if they're kind inside, they're going to be like gross. No, not <laughs> right. No, you may not pick my brain. Ew. No. So don't do that and don't, you know, but, um, but you could say, here's what I'm doing. Here's why I'm doing it. Here's why I'm asking you, are you interested? Right. In, in, in instead of spe specific time, would you be available for a call with me? Or I'm looking for a comedy mentor. Um, you can do this with anything guys. You can do this. How many origin stories do you, have you heard? Bob Bergen reached out to freaking Mel Blanc when he was 14 years old and said, hi, I'm Bob Bergen. <laughs> You're Mel Blanc. Hi. Um, you know, and do it in a not creepy way. Do it in a specific way. Don't expect anything. And, you know, I don't know. Th those would be my my thoughts of how you could explore. Um, can, could explore that questions. And then I think that's also why we come together to ask the questions. Because when we ask one question, then we can like, oh, wait a minute. I don't know. What if that was the answer? What if that was the answer? What if that was the answer? What if that was the, oh, could be all of those answers. I don't know. How could I? How, how could I do that? What's another way? And frankly, that's all we do as voiceover actors. That's what we do as voiceover. Here's, here's a line. Here's my first take. What else could I do with it? What else could I do with it? What else could I do with it? That's our imaginative process. Uh, so my question is, and I'll expand upon it, is what obstacles did you face to be able to make voiceover your primary income or your your sole um, source of income? Because I'm in this place where I've done some animation, I've done some commercial work. I love that you have such a variety of things on your resume. Um, and I'm just curious, like, what were there days where you're like, I, I don't know if I can do this or like, what do I have to do to make this happen? Like. I'm, I'm just in that place of transition where I'm like, I'm looking to hear more about what those obstacles were for other people and for you. Yeah, take it away, Kyle. Um, man, I, I definitely had those. I had those days for like 10 years. You know, but, uh, I just watched a, uh, a trailer that I voiced back in like 05. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I wasn't... Um, I wasn't full time yet. And I, I had those exact same questions. So basically I just, I just dumped my whole life into it. 
you know, um, right before I turned 30, I was thinking like, man, like 30 years went by pretty quick. Do you know how fast another 30 years is going to go by? You're going to mm. be an old man looking back and saying like, man, I wish I would have tried this. So I just dumped everything into it. Everything. I maxed out credit cards. I didn't care. I bought everything I needed. I upgraded all my equipment. And I just, every morning I was just, you know, rolling out of bed and just staring at the screen, trying to figure out like, who can I email? How can I audition? And really it's just, you can get overwhelmed because it's like, there's, there's like a hundred things you can do. I'd say just narrow it down, you know, dump everything into it, but narrow it down. Okay, I'm going to send out five emails. I'm going to do 10 auditions. I'm going to contact five people. I'm going to make sure that once a week I'm going to a workshop or a workout group. Um, I don't know. I'm going to join a Facebook group. Dump your life into this. You just completely sell out. Whatever you need, I don't care. Get competitive equipment. Like almost everyone has a Neumann. Almost everyone has a, uh, is it a, a Shure? Yeah, yeah, there we go. The Sennheiser, Sennheiser 416. Um, you know, everyone has one of those mics that, that's competitive. They have a booth. It costs thousands of dollars, but if you really, really want this, dump your life into this. You know, practice, practice, practice. Like, practice doesn't have to be formal. It's not like, you know, you, you, you go to a workshop or a workout group. You can do that. But, you know, listen to commercials and repeat what they say and do it in your style. Uh, watch, watch, mo I don't, why don't people watch movies, watch mm. movies, watch TV, watch this shit. You know, how can you want to be in animation and not watch it? Watch it, understand it, make this shit your life. Cause that's mm. what it's got to become if you're going to get successful. And that's what it took for me. I had to get consistent. I had to stare at a screen every morning and figure out what the hell am I going to do? And I'm, I'm the most disorganized human being that there ever was. <laughs> right. Like I just, I, you know, you start looking at a screen like, oh, I got to send out auditions. I got to do this. I got, you, you know, I'm like that. I'm, I'm, I'm messy. Even how I'm explaining this to you isn't very organized, but <laughs> you know, uh, but just in general, like I, I just, I just sold out, man. I just, I, I, I tried to make sure I was doing. I, I, I would know, say you, you didn't sell out, Kyle, you bought in. There we go. Yeah. That's, that's better. Cause selling out is something negative, but buying in is like, right. You know, You'd mentioned sorry, that's a football term. Like when you sell out. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm oh, I'm sorry. So, so if you're playing football, that means like you, you just do everything. You just throw it. Yeah, all you in. go all in. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, clearly. Yeah. My, sorry. Sorry. My <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Background of. doesn't. <laughs> it's all, no, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. No. 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 Okay. Good. 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 That's that's great. No. When we were talking on the 21 questions, you had said, mm -hmm. you had said something about stop being afraid or something like that or oh yeah yeah through the fear and i think that that's an interesting you know i think i think there's action and then there's mindset and aligning so how mm -hmm. do we and they all go together so how do you get in the right mindset to take the right actions but can you speak a little bit about what what that transition from being afraid to not being afraid what well, that think... felt like and what the experience was like for you I think that fear came from knowing that I was getting older. Like, you know, I mean, 30 is not old, but it just, those 30 years went by so quickly. And so I was fearful that, that I was going to get older and look back and not be the person that I wanted to be, mm -hmm. you know, and realize that I'm going to look back at 30 and wish that I would have done this and wish I would have done that. And so, what was, the, what was the fear that, I'm sorry, to interrupt, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, well, I guess the fear was just that, that, I wasn't going to, that I wasn't going to buy in to being mm. a great voiceover actor, that I wasn't going to purchase the microphone that I needed and all the equipment, take the classes. I signed up with voice one, two, three and voices.com. Even if you weren't booking on there, it made sense to just be on there because at least I could audition every day, which is part of your practice, right? Mm. That's one of the reasons why you can, you'll get to a point where you're so good, where you can see a script seconds before you're in a session and be able to knock it out like nothing. Yeah, because I've been looking at hundreds of scripts, you know, like weekly for such a long time that, you know, looking at any script, it doesn't phase you anymore. So mm -hmm. signing up with Voice123 and Voices.com, that's what I did. You know, upgrading your equipment and 
Um, also, the one thing I had to do that I'm not very good at is be social. I had to start going to some of these workshops and and workout groups and things like that. And um, I was just telling Kelsey that I went to uh, that's voiceover in 2015, which, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, go to go to workshops, go to wor uh, workout groups, completely buy into this, mm -hmm. and. I guess what I was fearing was just fearing that I wasn't ever going to actually get to this. And I, I just, I fought that fear to death, you know, like mm -hmm. I would rather, I would just rather not be alive than, than not be a voiceover actor. So if mm -hmm. you're right on the cusp of it, just continue, make sure you're, that this is what you really want to do. You're doing this eight to 12 hours a day that you're, you're contacting people, you're emailing people, you're auditioning, you're practicing everything because everything improves where you're going. And then, yeah, I'll admit there's some luck in there. Because um, let's say you're not home and you get a same day audition. Uh, let's, say, let's say you're not home, it's 11 o'clock and they're like, hey, we need this at 1130 and you're not home. You can't be back till noon. Well, whoever is at home can do that job or audition for it and they might book it. So, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of luck there. But, at, you know, put yourself in position to get that luck, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there was was there fear of not being able to support like of taking the leap and not being able to support yourself like oh it's yeah, not really yeah work but like oh I I have to I have to make sure I'm okay which I I do think you do need to make sure you're okay right yeah everybody um, needs to make sure you're okay um right, and right. then don't keep it from stopping you from from moving forward um, right I had a uh, I was a medical courier um, so I was picking up like bone marrow and blood and dropping that off. Um, and I was doing that at night, which freed up my daytime to mm -hmm. do voiceover. But I had saved up enough money to where I could quit. So that was also part of it. Mm -hmm. um, even though I was still maxing out credit cards, you know, so I could save the cash to make sure the rent was paid. But I just, I got lucky. I was booking, you know, stuff early, like to where I didn't need to work. And this was in 2014 when somehow the rent was a lot lower. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I was able to pay bills and sustain myself. But I mean, whatever route you feel like you need to take to do this, you need to move back in with your parents or whatever. It's just whatever it takes. Buy into that. Or like I said, it's a football term, sell out. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, I think the um, it's so exciting to have you in, in the dojo community, because that that's really what we're here for, too, is this is what it takes. Like, you know, we 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 lay out what it is and we're pretty we're pretty upfront. Like this is this is what it takes. And I always talk about how do we weave how do we weave voiceover into the gorgeous tapestry, you know, the the intricate tapestry of our gorgeous lives because um because you know voiceover is a great way to make a living once you get your business going and you are making a living at it you know and it also becomes a way of life and we want to create it so that we are building the life that we want to live right so we we need to go uh we need to sell out in in buy, sell out buy in that we can do this we are doing this and then how do you create a place where you're creating consistency, connection, community, consistency, connection, community, connect, consistency, connection, uh, continuity, com community, what's next, where, where do we, how do we go? And then how do you concentrate what is the effort? And then you start building critical mass. Um, that's, you know, that's the idea of the dojo. How do we come together to focus that so you're, so that you're, um, that you have a place to ask questions, right? Because any journey of becoming, you're always like, what the fucking fuck at some <laughs> point, right? Um, and why am I doing this? And who am I kidding? Like, we all go through that. That's part of growth. That's part of the the experience. And then um, I also think, I, I don't think that, um, you know, this isn't, uh, <sighs> what I'm trying to say. When I started 30 years ago, it required the same focus, intent, intention, action taking, and it was a lot less complicated. 
it was it was simpler in that you know i moved from chicago to a major market i got my skills up to get to a major agency that was where the oppor major opportunities were with advertising agencies and once you did that then that was you know a, a way to go and now there's so many ways to go and so many opportunities and so much that we need to do as business people as entrepreneurs as um you know diverse having diversified portfolios that it's a lot it's a lot more so it can it can become overwhelming hey. hello hello thank you guys for today thank you kyle for your time appreciate it yeah no problem so my question is what is your biggest tips or tricks to stand out from other vo to land the gig and do you use different strategies depending on what genre you're auditioning for mm, super good question yeah that is a good question um animation i haven't necessarily figured anything out yet um i just go nuts in the audition <laughs> uh same with same with video games because i'm not everything that works for commercial won't work for them they don't want to hear multiple takes they don't want to hear you know like oh i got a second character like they don't want to hear that shit um for the most part so i haven't figured anything out other than just be badass <laughs> you know um but I, i've taken a lot of um you know classes and done one-on-ones with animation uh directors and video game directors that they give you the tips that you need right um as far as commercials concerned, uh, multiple takes, understanding that your takes need to be different. So I'll give you an example with a car commercial. Um, let's just say that, oh God, it sucks buying a car. Well, here at Honda, it doesn't have to suck buying a car because you can get one for four ninety nine or whatever the fuck it costs. Um, <laughs> and then there's, but there's another way that you can read it. Ooh, I'm about to buy a car because at Honda it's great buying a car here because it, you could get one for $4.99, which is not a good price, but <laughs> um, those are two different ways of reading something, right? So commercial, that's a lot easier. Um, mm -hmm. Those are my strategies. Multiple takes. Mm -hmm. With with uh, different perspectives. So what you did yes, was yes. set up two, two questions that were being asked that require a different answer a different energy right exactly right, right. Yeah. your answer i'm asking the question to that script mm -hmm. and my answer is different because of the question that i ask you know mm -hmm. does it suck to buy a car or is it awesome buying a car um same with insurance oh, i'm gonna look for insurance oh man finally i am gonna get some insurance you know Two different, just two different reads. You read the script two different ways because those are two different perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think, a video game, uh, video game and animation. I'm, you're always told to set up the entire story. Um, you know, uh, well, let, let's break them down. So with video games, you're just given like three or four lines, no, almost no context whatsoever. Um, so. <laughs> It might say, you know, Roosevelt, 22, over there, three clicks, three clicks away. What's like, I don't, I don't even know what the hell that means. I just said a bunch of words, you know. Okay, <laughs> let's put us, let's give this whole thing a story, right? Maybe Roosevelt is the name I'm calling out. Maybe I'm on a walkie-talkie and I'm calling out to someone. Maybe the enemy is three clicks away. Maybe I'm a soldier. Maybe I'm tired and I, 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 just, I just can barely get these words out. Now I'm now I've set up a whole story. Maybe this has nothing to do with maybe what they've laid out. Because if they said in the specs, 25 to 40 year old male, he's a soldier and he's in the shit. If, th if that's all they said, then I have to add like all of these details in there to mm -hmm. really make this audition stand out. Because it's a it's a video game audition and there's really not much that I'm going off of other than I got those words and those very vague specs. Mm -hmm. So let's make it up, you know. So I'm, I'm, you know, maybe I'm a soldier. I'm wounded. Roosevelt, I got it. Enemies three clicks away. Fuck it, I'm going. You know, I, you just, you just, you add the details in there because the, you got to make the words dance, bro. You got to make mm. them dance like they're, they're, they're just there. You make them dance. So you paint that whole story. And it's really not too different in animation either. 
same thing. Like there may not be that much context, but one of the things you have to remember is that these characters are moving around. They're not just characters saying like, ha ha ha, you got hit in the head. It's more than that. It's, oh, we're getting hit in the head. What? Oh no, look out. You know, they're moving while they're doing all this stuff, right? Again, this is why it's important to watch animation so that you can see that they're not just saying words. They're all moving around. They're doing this. They're grabbing that. You know, it's different between, oh, uh, did you lose your keys versus did you lose your keys? Two completely different reads, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the words just said, did you lose your keys? I just I just did that. Ha, ha, idiot, did you lose your keys? That's two different reads right there. Um, oh, man, dude, did you lose your keys? Three different reads, right? You create the scenario, you paint the picture, you tell the story, right? And I think that those are some, those are, that's the strongest thing that you can do for animation and video games, paint it. Uh, like I said, commercial, um, uh, multiple takes, different perspectives, promo, again, multiple takes. Here's, I'm about to share some, some information. I did not know this until maybe like a few months ago. I thought that when you record a promo audition, right, coming up now on FS1, that stuff, I thought that the, oh, like this huge committee of people were sitting around saying like, okay, well, Bill, what do you think? Okay, Sharon, what do you think? Okay, Todd, what do you think? Okay, uh, Kyle Chapel. Okay, great, we'll go with him. It's not like that. There's just some editor that gets like all these voices in on a file and then they just throw it in there and it's like coming up on FS1, nah, too slow. Coming up on FS1, ooh, ooh too intense. Uh, coming up on FS1. Oh, perfect. Okay, great. Well, let's see what else this guy has on his uh, on the thing. Oh, wait, that that works for time. That works for time. And they're just throwing it in there. So, uh, dude, who did you use? Uh, some guy named Kyle Chappelle, I think. Yeah, Kyle Chappelle. <laughs> or is it Chapel? I don't know. Whatever. But that's what that's what goes on in promo. I didn't even know that. So Basically you the, the best thing, yeah. right? You give them the solution. Now I can. I'll just. When I see a promo audition, I send them a slew of shit. Just a, I don't give a fuck how much time it takes. You know, I'll just, I just send a bunch of takes, different speeds, different intensities, all this stuff, because they're looking for the person that fits the read according to time and intensity and pacing and all that stuff, as opposed to, you know, anything else. Um, you know, it's, it's not a big committee of people listening to it. Now, maybe it's like that for commercial, but it's not like that for promo. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, there's that, um, let's see, uh, did I answer your question? <laughs> uh, uh, yes, I think you pretty much nailed it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, it, 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 this is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, Kyle. And, and what, what it is, is bringing yourself different facets to yourself. So it goes back to that business question that we were talking mm -hmm. about. Like, ooh, what, right. what, what could be a solution? What could be a solution? And then it also kind of ties in everything we've been talking today and then go for it. Cause you didn't, right. you didn't go in your brain. Well, perhaps the, I lost my keys or, you know, hello, right. did you, you went, you just went for it. Like, okay, right. here's another take. Blah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so all of that, you know, um, the dojo, we talk about the, the foundation the, or the heart of each, the heart of each genre, which I think you tapped into Kyle is, um, the heart of the heart of uh, the heart of commercials is serving versus selling. Like help, how can I help? Oh, you hate buying a car? I can mm -hmm. help. Mm -hmm. Oh, you love buying a car? I can mm -hmm. help. Oh, um, buying a car is kind of scary. I can help. Right? right. How can you mm -hmm. help? How can you serve? Um, with animation, it's bringing it to life. Right. right. How how something that is not alive is alive and it moves and it breathes and it has things that it's after. And a video game inhabit the world fully. Where are you? Right, right. You're, you're thirty. You're 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 twenty five to thirty. You're in the sh you're a soldier. You're in the shit. What kind of soldier? What rank of soldier? What 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 is the shit? Paint and the story. What's right. what's right. happening in the shit right now? Yeah. So right. and and uh, the greatest dojo o at the end of at the end of everything we we come together, we we go like what's what's something that made you say o. Oh? Um, greatest dojo o that applies to everything in general be more specific in general mm -hmm. be more specific because right. everything that kyle was just saying is like specific and in it specific and in it yeah 
Because the more that you add to it, you're 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 always banking on the people who don't know this or who are in a hurry or who don't give a shit about the audition. You want to beat all those people out. And it's easy to do when you're giving your best take, right? When you're uh when you're adding those layers into your character auditions, you're you're beating everyone else out. Cause again, there's probably people in a hurry, probably people who don't sound all that great, probably people who don't fit. Beat all of them out. And you can do that by, you know, multiple takes, different perspectives. You know, um, again, adding a little bit more to those animation and and character reels or character auditions, like add more, do more. You're beating all of those people out. And that's that's the way that you have to think. And so, yeah, ho hopefully that answers the question. Cool. Yeah, that's good. Good answer. Good question. Good answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and it's also, um, it's not something special that, I mean, it is something special that we, but it's something special we each do. And also I think goes with, uh, comes with, with time and practice and confidence and clarity, the more we can trust our voice. Um, mm -hmm. So, and what, what you're going to bring, Nevin, is different than what Kyle brings, but it's going to be yours. Absolutely. Be yours, so trust that, yeah. Uh, my question is, how do you get into a piece of copy or a genre and voiceover that you just aren't feeling? Like, you tried some of the pieces, but you just, like, it, it's not connected with my all or anything like that. Dude, I'll, I'll admit... I hate reading slavery stuff. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. It's so depressing, man. Like, look at all these smiles. Dude, it's like, so, oh my God. Dude, it's so depressing, man. Like, it really is. I hate reading this stuff. But uh, recently I had to read something. I'm, I'm not joking. Like, he, he replied in the email, like, this brought a tear to my eye. And it's because uh, one of the things that he said was, like, give it kind of like a Morgan Freeman type read. I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to ignore the topic and I'm just going to kind of give my best, not imitating Morgan, but just understanding like his cadence, his cadence and his pace. And I'm just going to do that and not worry so much about this really depressing subject and just focus on how I'm supposed to read it. Uh, usually if I'm not into it, I just ignore the topic. Like mm. when it's something like that, or if it's like, uh, like shampoo, Clearly, I use a lot of shampoo, man. Like, like, oh yeah, like I use a lot of shampoo. So, but it, let's just say I had a shampoo commercial. Like, I I don't use it. Like, so, but I just get into it as if I had it, <laughs> right? Like, I could probably read. I'm not bragging, but I could probably read a a, a shampoo commercial better than anyone here, you know, because I just I, I'll just get into it. You know, I don't have hair. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the tagline. <laughs> right. <laughs> For people with no hair, it, you don't care. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, you know, like I'll just, I'll just have fun with it and make it fun. If it's boring, make it fun. If it's depressing, figure, uh, ignore the topic, ignore, ignore the subject. Like, is there anything in particular uh, that you've, where you feel like you can't get into it? Um, right now is narration. So I noticed that I do have an accent or sometimes my words have been like, I'll skip over words or things like that because oh, it's not okay. the usual way I talk. So I was like, that's one thing I'm having trouble with. Like like with animation and video games, I'm like, okay, I can put it in my own way. But with narration, it's like down to the booking. So yeah. yeah. Well, the Oh, go ahead, I was, go ahead. I was gonna say, um, ignore how you sound. That's one of the most critical things I, I could give. One of the most critical pieces of advice I could ever give. Ignore how you sound. You're listening to how you sound as opposed to how you feel, right? Now, again, if I have to read slavery stuff, I can't. I have to ignore how I, how I, how I sound. I can't worry about the subject. I just have to go on how I feel, you know. And I feel like I want to tell this story. Mm -hmm. So that's you. Tell the story. Don't worry about how you sound. Who, who cares how you sound? So what if you have an accent? Like it, because you're just, when you just explained that to me, were you worried about how you sounded? Exactly. There you go. That's voiceover. Like who give sound is not that important. Now it, 
when it comes to the final decision, of course, they're going to be like, well, this fits what we're looking for a little bit better. But for you to give the strongest read, ignore how you sound. Who gives a shit how you sound? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Be yourself. How you feel matters way more. That's why I have to fake it so much with that slavery stuff. <laughs> but, but how you feel matters way more than how you sound. Don't just ignore how you sound. You know, yeah. because who knows? They might they, they might hear and be like, "Oh, I wasn't thinking about an accent, but th this this works so well for what I'm doing." Because you because nailed the spot. Because she's so connected to it. Like, wow, yeah, exactly. I, I, I feel it because she felt it. Um, yeah. And then I think you you said something else, Deidre, that's really important. This is not how I would say something. So then create part of your practice. You know, we, we talk about the pre-flight checklist in, your, in the things that you do as you're developing your skills. And then even when you do, you know, at, at the dojo, we talk about the pre-flight checklist. What are the things that you do, like any pilot that is flying a plane comes and checks the things off the list. Kyle was saying, when you've been flying planes enough, you can go right? Mm -hmm. As you're beginning, you wanna make sure you're checking each thing. But one of the things that you can do, especially on something that you're like, ah, <laughs> don't know about this, or I'm resistant to this, or this is making me crazy, or this makes me feel dumb or something like that what are you saying why are you saying it who are you saying it to and then put it in your own words paraphrase it paraphrase it put it in your own words so you understand and then you can get closer to what you are talking about and if it's something that you don't know dick about which sometimes we we do um we do in narration like i know nothing about this subject Talk about something you do know and explain that, you know, like, so just keep on, keep on always bringing the copy to you. It's not about you. It's about what you feel so that I feel it. That's the most important because otherwise it's just, ooh, um, and that goes back to the sound of it, right? It's not about you, but it is about you in you finding the way that you do find something that you are relaxed about or calm about, like, like, like Kyle saying, but you, but make it yours. Make it yours and then share it. And so, you know, and ideally it'll be something that matches. And if not, there's lots of other auditions. So it's all good. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Thank you. I appreciate no it. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Hi. Yes. Uh, my question was what tips would you give to a beginner who's attempting to make samples and stuff to send out to these companies and to kind of put like, in your like uh, accounts and stuff for uh, these these websites like voices123 or voices.com to kind of get people interested or, uh, you know, when, kind of when making samples for the first time, any advice or tips? Uh, like a demo reel? Yeah, like a demo reel. Okay. Yeah, um... and I, I, would, I, would, I would differentiate, I would differentiate uh, samples samples versus a demo reel because i think they're two separate things yeah personally personally i think they're two separate things because right. what you're talking about connor is <coughs> having something something that you can do by yourself that shows somebody like this is my voice this is my voice in this context here's a little sample but to make sure when you do samples that you're not putting forward this is my professionally produced demo reel yeah that's a good um, point. To, to separate those things but but go ahead kyle what, what were your thoughts that was a good point uh well yeah it, is it a demo reel or are they samples which one uh, is your question about um i guess whichever would come first when you're first trying to okay, uh, definitely. start landing work so yeah. Definitely a demo reel. A demo reel is just, that's standard in the VO industry because how else is anyone going to know what you can do? Right. Um, boy, let's see. Okay, don't rush. That's one. <laughs> <laughs> don't rush it. Um, first, in, investigate. Um, listen to, uh, are you familiar with the uh, VO resource guide at all, the VORG? Uh not particularly okay um in that magazine which you can also look up online uh they list a whole bunch of demo producers go and listen to all their demo reels and see who fits whose style fits what you want to do and a lot of the times they'll have a free consultation you can ask them hey 
you know, what, um, you know, what, what's your style? Like, what are you thinking as far as a demo reel is concerned? Um, they'll vet you. They'll ask you questions about who you are as a person and what you want to put on your reel. Um, so you can look up a series of people who create demo reels to begin with. Now, the downside to that is it's very expensive. Um, it's going to cost a, a lot of money. Like they, it could get really, it's really relative. Pricey. It's relatively expensive as you're yeah. starting a business. So yes. at first it might seem expensive, but then when you get paid $2,000 to do one thing, yeah. because you book something off of the demo reel, it's, but it at first it, it, it requires, it requires some investment. Yeah. Um, that's not insubstantial to get a good demo reel done. Right. Mm -hmm. Is okay. there a particular genre you're thinking about? Uh, yes. Uh, I want to lean into more animation and video games. Okay. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to get to go and kind of like tour Crunchyroll. Oh, nice. And so that kind of solidified that that's what I'd like to do. And I kind of got to see it happen firsthand. So just kind of finding okay. a starting point is where I'm mm -hmm. at. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, look, you can have an animation reel. You can have a video game reel. So you could have two reels. If money is tight, create a character reel. Okay, these are the characters I can do, right? And that was my first reel because I just didn't want to pay for two different reels. But create a character reel where you're combining both video game and animation characters on that one reel. Um trying to think like uh, you can I mean you can you can ask a demo producer this stuff and ask them if they can create a character reel for you I mean if they if that's not their style if that's not what they want to do then that's fine then you just move on to the next but there's so many different there's so many people out there that put together demo reels um so the advice I'd give is just like don't rush like be patient, look around, try to find, you know, the right, like, it's, it's up to your, your wallet. It will dictate what you're going to get, you know, like if you're ready to make that investment, make that investment, but um, don't rush, really look around, really try to find as many demo producers as you can listen to what they've done. Almost every demo producer has multiple reels. Listen to all of them, feel, feel them out and see which one you think can produce the best uh real for you and what you want to do mm -hmm. um and if you can't afford or don't want to make that investment uh for an animation reel and a video game reel then do a character reel just have them all on one you know maybe six to eight different characters that you can do um i don't i don't know what's in your in your wheelhouse but you know I, I already know what video games they make. They make, you know, you're killing a demon, you're killing a soldier, you're killing a zombie. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, like, so there, that that's going to be on your video game reel, right? <laughs> um, you know, animation, you know, uh, it just it just depends on, on what you have in your breadbasket. But this is why it's important to work with someone who yeah. has, who creates demo reels for a living. Um, because they would have more insight as to what you can do and how they can direct you. And and I think I think also so so Connor, I'm I'm so excited to get started with you because we're going to start, um, we're going to start with you should do voiceover launchpad and a lot of these questions that are like what, what, uh, we're going to create a framework for you to start thinking about it. And there's so much, there's so much in the question that you asked, how do you get started with samples? Cause da, 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 and I have opportunity, right? There's so much that you've got going on. And so how do we keep on parsing out, understanding, first of all, what is all the thing, right? Um, how do we, ca um, I don't particularly care for the word capitalize. How do we um, optimize? How do we optimize when opportunity comes, for instance, you have a personal in and have uh, have met somebody at Crunchyroll, so there you can there. How do you cut to the chase? So for for me, there's there's so many layers of how do you cut to the chase and how do you present yourself as someone who is humbly ready to um, to do this for the long run. 
So you want to make sure that whatever you're putting forward and when you have opportunities that you're putting forward things that are your best foot forward, right? Because you're not like, oh, here, here's everything I've got. And it's like, oh, okay, well, thank you, right? Because you don't understand it enough or you aren't ready to, to, to you know, one of the things we say at the dojo is, breaking into voiceover you need to be get able to get on the freeway at 85 miles an hour with people who've been driving the autobahn for 25 years can you do it yes can you do it on a scooter probably not can you can you build a vehicle fairly quickly you know not not, not quick it's not about quickly it's about do you understand how to put a vehicle together what is the simplest thing of a vehicle so so having patience having patience and always going forward, right? Alina's wrote a freaking book. Alina's doing comedy, <laughs> like let's do right. it, right? Having patience and having patience and moving forward. Um, and then understanding what is the game that you, what is the game you wanna play? And then how can you optimize where you're at in it? And how do you have, have patience and go forward? So with any demo, uh, uh, you know, uh, you, so your original question was uh, asking about samples. <coughs> Understand the genre. Um, play, create something. You have a specific. You have a specific in at a specific thing that you are interested in doing. So, create some stuff. And say hi. I'm putting these together as samples. I'd love to have your feedback on that. Or what are you looking in for samples, or something like that? You just ask really specific questions to keep you moving forward. And then, and then uh, for everyone, understanding. You know, for us, for a commercial demo, are you able to pick up any piece of copy that's put in front of you, nail it within one or two takes, nail it within one or two takes without any direction? If you feel like that comfortable, that confident, that a bit able to self-direct, then you're going to be able to do a, a, a full demo recording and invest, get the most out of your investment for creating the tool that is going to become the foundation of going forth with what you're bringing forth into the world. You're going to be able to deliver in the two hour session that a, a good demo producer say, all right, we ready to roll. And you'll also be able to deliver beyond that because any good demo producer will be able to go like, you know, it's like going to a beauty salon, right? Any good makeup artist is going to make you look fabulous. Are you going to be able to make yourself look fabulous in all the situations coming forward, right? So it's, it's, there's, your, your questions are right on and your, your instinct is right to what do you do to move forward? Because I want this. Um, hair on fire, no hair on fire. It's good, and then patience too. We um, we have it. So, um, I'm super excited to get to work with you, so you can relax about some of these things and have some perspective. And we can also go like and go and go and go, and then go in context, right? Because I think that's one of the things that happens when we have this big spread out thing. Now that we were talking about, there's so many freaking ways. And how do you know? And who who do you? How do you? like who and how, and you don't want to take a wrong move, but you don't want to not take a move, you know, like, so then you get frozen in that. So yeah, lots of layers and lots of um, this taffy pull of trusting your instinct, trusting your, in trusting your instinct, trusting your, your, your um, drive, your vision, your ambition, your, you know, trust in yourself. Um, and then also having patience and having patience and, and wanting knowing where you want to be and understanding what it takes to get there and stay there. Like those are s two separate things and we're always doing that taffy pull. Mm -hmm. um, so super good question. Um, I'll, I'll finish with one, um, with one image that I think is a really good mindset and helpful for all of us because we're all always doing this, but I call it the, um, the locomotion of desire. <laughs> the locomotion of desire. So if you put your thumbs together like this, and this thumb is, this thumb is like everything that you want right freaking now, you know you want it, you know you're good at it, you love it, you want to live it, you like chased it, you're like, ah, I just want it. Yes, let's go, let's go do it, let's go. I'm so good and I'm so, that's one thing. And we all need to, 
have that part that believes in ourselves and goes for it and isn't afraid and all of that stuff. That's super good. Um, and then there's this part that is like, I don't know. I suck. What if I never make a living at this? Oh God, everyone's so much better than me. I don't understand. This is overwhelming. I'm going to kill myself. Ah! Right? That we have these two things going. And that's part of the learning cycle of we're, I'm great, I'm suck, I'm great, I'm suck, right? You know, like we have those things that, that contrast in us. So the game is if you do this, you'll probably get somewhere, but you're probably gonna have to go backwards and know what you don't know and understand the whole thing at some point, right? So you can jump here forward and you, you can do it. And then where do, does it create the foundation for what you want to do in the long, in the long run, right? And if you have this as a thing, which we all have parts of ourselves that doubts ourselves, that isn't a critics, that is overwhelmed, that's trying to do too many, you know, doing all these things. And then if we don't, if we don't move forward with that, then we then we stop ourselves, right? So the game is we don't want to get too far ahead here and we don't want to get too far behind here, but how do we keep these things going? Which is exactly what you're doing, Connor. We've already talked. We're like, okay, let's let's see what happens when we when we step this forward. We'll, we'll test it out. Is this the right place for me? Yeah. And now you're going to find out so many things. You're going to, you know, you're going to find out so many things like, oh, wow, I don't know anything about this. God damn it. Whoa, there's so much. And then you're going to go through the class and you're going to start working with people and you're going to like, hey, wait a minute, I know some stuff. Whoa, whoa. And then, you know, like, so what the game is, the locomotion comes from keeping these two things always going. Ch -ch 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 -ch. I believe in myself. I think uh, there's so much more I need to know. I believe in myself. There's so much more I need to know. And then you keep it going like that. And that's where you get them. That's where you get the train going down the track. So, I don't know. That's that's a big, big ass metaphor. Take it, leave it, what it, what you what you want to do with it. But um hopefully that's hopefully that's helpful. Hello. Um, so I have a question. Um, I got an interesting email today about representation. Yeah. But now it's just opening a lot of questions. What's the green flags with it? What's red flags with it that I should be looking out for? Questions I should be asking. Mm, good question. Mm -hmm. uh, one awesome. red flag is if they're asking for money right away. Ooh. If they ask for money right away, red flag, don't sign. Run, with don't them. walk. Yeah, yeah run, run, don't walk. Yeah. Um, you, uh, it depends on what you want to do with your career and what they offer. Like, what can they offer you? So you have to ask them more questions than they ask you. Mm -hmm. because it's 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 a business relationship if it almost feels like it's a job like oh they're giving me jobs it feels like that but it's a business relationship they have to work for you they have to give you what you're looking for you might mm -hmm. be um with an agency that maybe focuses a little bit more on commercial and promo and maybe you're in interested in animation and video game mm -hmm. um so if they're if they're not right for you don't get desperate like you know the the first agency that said anything to me, I was like, okay, yeah, I'll sign. I don't care. Like, <laughs> what? Pay five thousand dollars a week? Okay, I'll do it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> like, you know, but just just vet them, make sure they're they're okay. Um, that that they can get you the gigs that you want to book. Mm -hmm. um, so don't be like afraid to ask them questions on like. Oh no, no, ask them. In, in fact, in fact, run your business. Yeah. You're the CEO of your business. Who are you hiring to be on your team? That's, right, exactly. That's the that's the way to approach it. We are always, we always, especially in these things that are ultimately empowering things, when we add a representation to our team, that mm -hmm. is freaking empowering. That is just multiplying our opportunities, our ability, people who believe in us, people who will be making money with us. So it's very empowering. A lot of times as actors, we disempower. We submit our auditions. We uh, need representation because I can't hold it. My, I can't do it myself. So the more we come into this interview, like look at um, who, who would you hire to take care of your kid or who would you hire to, um, like what, who, who do you want to be working with ongoingly? Um, so, so really come to it with your running the interview and seeing if you want to work with them. Um, and I think then it's also it's also very important that you know what you want. At the dojo, we, we, when we get to this level, of this, this is a brown belt sort of question when you have what you need. And clearly, Jesse, you have at least uh, part of, you know, you have, you have what you need in that someone's interested in working with you. So that's oh. awesome. Um, but what do you want? 
um, a lot of times I talk about this, like a lot of times when we get like, I'm going to be a voiceover actor and I want an agent. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like standing on the corner going, I want a boyfriend. I want a boyfriend. And um, you can get a boyfriend. If you stand on the corner and shout, I want a boyfriend, a boyfriend could come along. Is it the boyfriend that you want? Is it the relationship that you want? Why do you want that boyfriend? Why do you, why would you want this boyfriend and someone else would want that boyfriend, right? Or girlfriend or whatever, whatever. Um, but I think sometimes because our heart is so open to it and ready for it that we, we just come at it. So also be discerning and, and like I said, it's, it's a relationship and more importantly, it's a business relationship. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then, you know, I think Jesse just like knowing you a little bit from these calls and hearing how specific uh, a product that you are bringing that's so like mm, deliciously you, right? Then you would definitely want somebody who is a, aligned with the things that you want to do. And then where do your voice, where does your voice align? So if someone's like, hey, we wanna work with you, we don't do animation. Um, oh. Like, hmm, well, that's not going to work with me. <laughs> you know? And obviously, I'm, I'm sure that anyone who's saying like, ooh, this is cool. Um, and, then, and then just anything that you would vet any human. Um, do they seem authentic? Do you vibe with them? Um, I would, I would uh, say, hey, can I talk to somebody who's also on your roster? Or if you, you know, or go through their roster, who do I know? Who knows who, someone who's there? I'm, I'm going to talk to somebody. Um, this weekend, who's like, hey, I'm interested in working with your manager. Can I talk with you? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. I would love to. But vet, vet them. Um, <clears throat> find out about their business practices. How do they run their business? How do they work with people? Um, what you know, th there's those are things like um, financially. You know, financially, how do they work? Um, Listen to the people on their roster as well. Yeah, yeah. Where do you where do you fit in? Do you respect the work that you're hearing? Mm -hmm. um, what work have they booked? You know, go to those people's website. How are they presenting? Is that the caliber of people that you want to be working with? And even if it's not, um, you know, even if you're like, "Ooh, I want to be up here," um, getting started somewhere is good. And you know, don't just say yes. But sometimes, you know, but sometimes say yes and get started and then say something else later mm -hmm. um you know, and careful what you sign it used to be when i started when i started that you'd sign a one-year contract and then a three-year contract and sometimes that became bad that became troublesome because um you know because agencies flipped over but you were signed with a contract but now it's not the play you know so sometimes it just um you know so so understand what you're signing um and what you're committing to um in a union are you union or not yet union jesse not yet not yet okay so that's another thing that's another thing to understand do they have opportunities for both is union something that you're aspiring to how what's their relationship with that um and uh, uh yeah there's a couple like so so many things but mostly trust yourself mostly think of this is this someone who i want to be working with is this something that's going to get me where you're going taking that car that car metaphor that we uh -huh. said earlier are you able to get on the highway with people who've been driving autobahn for 25 years in that car metaphor you built your vehicle you're on the road who are you choosing to be in your back seat helping you navigate to where you want to go so then that's also being super clear in a meeting about where you want to go what are your financial, uh, ex you know, vision? What sort of things do you want to be working with? Opportunities do you want to have? And who do you want to be driving with? And you know, sometimes that you know who has who has the most gas card that gets you there, right? Who's who's going to get you the most opportunity? And sometimes you know, going with a, the biggest place is not the best thing for you. Uh -huh. What what are you thinking about? I think getting started, and if this is your first representation. Unless it's something that you you go through to a meeting, go like, ew, that was creepy, or I heard bad things about that, or um, say yes, be aware of be aware of what you know. If if it's not working out, 
what are the ways to not sign um you you know sometimes an agent will say let's 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 do a little trial let's hip pocket you that's an interesting way to go mm -hmm. um, if someone wants to explore working together that gives you both leeway um yeah there's so many th this is it's so cool because all these questions are things that come up on this natural progression from i don't know to working pro the question that connor just asked is like how do I start getting out there and how do I make a demo oh. and here you've got all those things and you're obviously out there enough that someone has or, or and or you've been reaching out oh. so that opportunities are starting to come to this next level of taking your working pro to the next the next level so it's all good and it's all part of the continuum um does that help? And then I think also, Jesse, what questions do you have? Trust those questions, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 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 Well, thank you. That was a good mindset, mindset shift. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, and then just trust that you are such a delicious, specific thing. Like, do you get me? What, what would you do with this delicious, specific thing, right? Because mm -hmm. I know what I want to do with it. Kyle, do you, can you just really quickly go through the the um, your evolution of agents? Because I think that's a good sign. Yeah, like, the I first think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. right. The first agent I signed with was some agency called TMN Agency, which was in San Diego. Um, I don't know how he got work or where it came from, but sure, I signed. Um, and I think I booked I booked a Clippers radio spot with them, and I booked like some Taco Bell e learning thing with them uh, for trainees. Uh, then I went to, uh, it's some agency where you have to pay, which I shouldn't have signed with. <laughs> is it, is it Imperium? I, I can't remember. Oh, Imperium um, was one, was one that was known for that. Yeah. yeah. Some guy named Shane, right? Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's that. Yeah. Previous. Yeah. Previous, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. You had to pay. And, um, I, ju I just don't think that you should have to pay first. Mm -hmm. uh, then I went to 90210, which was with uh, Lisa Martell. I don't even know if that agency is around anymore, but that's where I booked my first like national spots. I booked uh, mm -hmm. Buffalo Wild Wings national spot and a uh, Gatorade national spot. Um, and then from there, I went to CESD. I also have regionals like uh, Go Voices and uh, the talent group and Impressive Talent. And... Uh, through after CESD, I also have a manager. His name is Vinny Biano, and he connected me with everyone at Atlas. So I'm with Atlas now. That's my LA agent, my LA, my LA New New York agent. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's that's where I am now. Yeah, but that was that was the journey, and that mm -hmm. was so the first ten years was partially you had it you had representation before you were going full time. Yes, yeah. T yeah. Uh, TMN that agency was... was like in 2010. Mm -hmm. So you had four. You had some representation for four years four before you went full time. Yeah, right. Correct. So mm -hmm. Just again, notice that there's there's a journey, there's an evolution, and you can start and then change, right? So that's that's the other thing. You don't have to marry the first boyfriend that you go out with. <laughs> <laughs> I get really intimidated by all of the technology and. I, it makes me spontaneously combust. Like I just, I just shut down. So mm -hmm. I just was wondering where you went to learn about Reaper or whatever. And, um, and also if, do you, do you have to have a Mac or can you use a PC? And that's it. Did you say <laughs> Reaper? You. This is great. Yeah, say say like, uh, Reaper is a DAW. Is a... Oh, I didn't even know. Yeah. I've never heard of Reaper. Yeah. I use a uh, Logic Pro. Um, Where did I learn? Uh, Back in like, Oh six. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, but back in 06, when I uh, first got a Mac, I just started messing around with like GarageBand and stuff like that, just because I was trying to make music. Um, so I just got familiar with the DAW that way. But yeah, you can learn on the job. One, um, are, uh, your DAW, you can learn a lot of that from YouTube. You can learn a lot of just, you know, and luckily voiceover is one of the easiest professions when it comes to audio because it's really just hit record and you're 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 damn near there right mm -hmm. um so you can learn a lot of that stuff from from youtube and uh and yeah uh are you also overwhelmed with the physical equipment like hardware 
I'm overwhelmed with all of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, just uh, <laughs> e email me, email me and I'll, I'll, I'll help you out. I, I promise it, I will. I, I will answer your email. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. This has been really great, everybody. I got to peace out, but thank you so oh, much. Yeah. What, one more, one more thing, Kristen. Yeah. Um, yeah. First of all, the mindset is everything. So if you know you're freaked out, you're more on the technophobe than gearhead continuum. Yeah. So keep on addressing that and keep on calming yourself. I need to know this. I am a capable person. I will know it. So just keep on figuring out what's freaking out. Coming and asking questions is great. And then understand that there's certain things you need to know. There's a basic framework. And then you can always find someone who can help you. At first, it's overwhelming. Then you make some choices. There's four things that are part of every setup. You mm -hmm. can evolve it. And then you will, as you continue to go and grow, you'll have more opportunities to practice. At first, you'll be recording. Yay, I recorded it. Then you'll be, mm -hmm. oh, hey, I edited it. So, so keep on trusting that it's an evolution. The mindset is everything at first, and it is something that you have to do. And once you get the basics of it, it's pretty simple. And then you always have someone who knows more than you who can answer the questions. We have our uh, tech, techno sensei, uh, Nick Santosier, who's part of our program and lays out oh, what we need great. and is available. So I can connect you with Nick and there's lots of great people out there. So you just need to calm yourself and trust that it's a process and that it's not very hard. And once you do know how to do it, it'll be like anything else that was a little scary before. So. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. So I think um, my other question was around um, how do you keep track of like your auditions and your bookings and like potential clientele, especially I, I know you were, I think you said something along the lines of like not being the most organized or something like that. I, and I, I, I really think that that's um, something that I could use some advice around, especially at looking at put, moving forward to have this be a full-time career for me mm -hmm. um how how do you keep track of things and help yourself stay on point to get shit done so to speak yeah. You know what? <laughs> yeah honestly i mean they've got like a thousand apps right now that can help with almost any specific thing uh, i would just say uh uh google sheets because that will help if I'm not mistaken, that should be free Google mm -hmm. sheets and Google docs. Like they're both free. Mm -hmm. Anytime you audition for something, anytime you have a client, write that shit down. If you have a Gmail account, they're automatically going to be added to your contacts anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. So you could use, I mean, for, for like a year, me and two other voice actors were trying to figure out like, okay, what's the perfect CRM dude. Mm -hmm. Gmail is the perfect CRM. That's the perfect CRM. Okay. <laughs> like I have stuff in there from like ye years ago, like a decade ago. Mm. Um, just, it saves all of your contacts, all of your emails, just, you, just rely on Gmail for that, but you can use Google sheets to kind of organize. Okay. I just worked with this person. I contacted this person. Here's the date time. This is what I did. Blah, blah, blah. Google sheets, huge recommend. Um, uh, you don't have to get Doc Hub, but I love Doc Hub. That helps you uh, fill out any NDAs that you have. Any paperwork, you can just type that in so you don't have to use a printer. That that completely eliminates a printer. Um, if you have a Mac, you could use, what's that app called? Uh, Preview. I just found out like two weeks ago that Preview does the exact same thing. So why I'm paying for Doc Hub, I don't understand. <laughs> um, but Preview basically does the same thing. Uh, Google Docs, I, I just use that for everything. Um, Hell, even chat GPT, like I use that to uh, help with my scripts. For some dumbass reason, when you get a script every now and then, they'll write the word VO and then it'll have a sentence like VO colon at Honda, we like to VO sell you nice cars. Like it's so dumb. So I'll throw that into chat GPT and say, dude, get rid of all this VO stuff. Like take all of that away and keep everything else verbatim and then read the script from there. Uh, uh, what else do I have? Uh, Dropbox is helpful because you can helps you send big files. If you don't want to spend the money, use WeTransfer. Uh, I'm sorry, like my mind is like, <laughs> um, you know, one day you will be able to afford getting assistant. I have two assistants, um, so I a lot of the paperwork that I just absolutely hate doing, they do. Mm -hmm. uh, invoicing, uh, use something called Wave Financial. I'm not sure if you have to pay for it, but Wave Financial 
keeps track of all your invoices. That shit is badass. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, again, you know, AI is being implemented into like everything we're doing. So, you know, Wells Fargo in and of itself will help you because you can just type in, um, you know, deposits or something like that. And you could now you can look at your checks, right? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to think. Of this else. is all good. You don't have to have all the answers, Kyle. Right. This, is, this is the but helpful again, one. It's hope. Yeah, go ahead. Right. Whatever. Whatever. I haven't answered. Like, just email me. I. I, I swear. I will. I will answer. <laughs> I went to. It might take a while to answer all these, but I will answer your questions. Like. And and I think what just a mindset thing, Vivia, and and for everyone, when we are doing this work, we are starting our own businesses. Mm -hmm. So, what if you were the boss of a business? You know, it's easy to be an employee who's like, I don't know anything about what I'm a mess about this. But if you're the boss mm -hmm. and you know what business you're running and why you're running it, then you start asking the questions. OK, how am I going to keep track of my money? How am I going to keep track of that? What, what are the questions that you need to ask to run a business? Mm -hmm. Right. And relax about it because it just needs to be the basic. You know, one of the one of the things that we do at Brown Belt is what do you need to start a lemonade stand? Mm -hmm. Keep on coming back to that basic question. Make sure you have your social security card. It tr trust me, it helps. Trust me. It helps. <laughs> make sure you have your social security card. Trust That's me, it helps. Um, and then you can get more complex on that, right? right? But but start 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 understanding that you are running a business. It's your responsibility to run a business, and it's okay and easy to run a business. Mm -hmm. um, so think through it at that basic level. And then you can get fancier and fancier. Um, one of our uh, friends of the dojo is Danny States, who has created a fantastic tool called Voice Overview, very much worth looking into. She has a marketing background and also um, her, her spouse has a financial background. So as she was transitioning from being a, an amazing marketer and understanding all that's involved in that, she combined with her husband to keep track of the financials. So voice overview has a little bit of how do you keep track of your client relations? And then also how do you keep track of what's happening financially, which is the other part of running a business. You can have all your relations and you don't understand, are you making money? How am I making money? Why am I making money? Oh, we know those sort of things. So it's, it, it's a very affordable solution and an elegant solution that you can explore. And you know, you could also look at how do you get started with something more simple. I think it's a little bit. Um, um, who was our kitty cat lady? What was her name? Uh, the kitty cat lady. Um, I think it's uh, Kristen. Kristen, yes. Kristen's question of like, Wah! I don't know anything about. I don't know anything about technology. It freaks me out. And I don't hear you being freaked out. I hear you going like, How can I get better at it? But just kind of going like, Oh, how do I get better at it? Um, but I think that first mindset of I'm the boss and this is my business, then you start asking clear questions. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Tish. I think right, no that problem. is helpful. I, I noticed it's so funny for me because I have a uh, I have an MBA in marketing and I'm really good at helping other people with their businesses. Oh, <laughs> that's that's mindset. That's uh -huh. internal yep. alignment. We should talk, darling, because if you okay. got that on, you know the answers. You just need to you just need to get in a line with yeah. it. Yeah. And I, I did just a submit for the scholarship and that's exactly what I was saying in this. Yeah, moment. yeah. But get get on my calendar. It will be OL. We'll we'll voice yeah. over one so that we can talk. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. All right. So Natasha's new to the voiceover community. Um and their question is, do casting directors usually ask you to send audition recordings within a certain time frame? Like maybe twenty four to thirty six hours after they send out the recording request <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah um do casting directors usually you don't get the uh audition from directly from the casting director you get it from an an agent or the person that's putting together the project so and yeah the turnaround times could be 24 hours it could be instant mm, we need this ASAP. yeah yeah it could be asap it could be 72 hours like mm -hmm. uh, yeah i would say i would say in between 15 minutes and uh Let's just say seventy-two hours. It's it's usually yeah three three or four days. Yeah, three or four days. Yeah. Some, sometimes, sometimes on animation or video games, you might have a few more days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Promo was like right now. We need this yesterday. right now. Like yeah. like drop everything, get in the booth, 
right right this second right. promos yesterday yeah right. yeah so <laughs> so the answer is the answer is yes and then the the implied question is as you're coming up how do you make yourself available which is another question jesse of are you are you ready in the structure of your life to have right. representation to be able to to fulfill those opportunities because if you're working nine to five and you can't get to auditions or sessions because you're working nine to five then you need to do what Kyle did and do the medical courier at night so you can be available. My question's short and simple, and it should be very easy for you to answer. Mine is a tech question, and I want to know that seeing as that you play in the animation and video game world, um, do you ride the game, or do you have plugins that control that for you so you don't have to worry about it? Good no, I, I use the game. I, I'm, I don't know shit about plugins, bro. I'm serious. I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting for that dream day when AI can just control everything. I can just walk in the booth and say, "Computer on, do this." Like, you know, but I just use the game, man. Like, I really do. I just the ride the Picard, game. The Picard approach. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Do you mark yeah, it on your on your um your interface? I I you know what I I just know twenty four twenty eight uh 34 38 and 44 i just know that those are my spots for whatever i'm doing gotcha. uh, there's some like if i'm just doing a commercial like using what i'm using now that's uh 44 i do spots for prize picks mm -hmm. i just go right down to 34 because those are like at prize picks we need such and such like i hope that i didn't blow out your speakers like but, that was kind oh, of yeah, but, but okay. i know that i'm going down to 34 for that um and mm -hmm. then if it's like combat stuff got to go all the way down to like 24 because that's mm -hmm. really where you're screaming at the top of your lungs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, cause you're being shot at or you have to, th there's just noise around and you have to scream over that noise. Um, but yeah, those, I just, I just know it mentally where to go. Gotcha. Thanks man. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. No problem. So Kyle, I had a question for you. I'm, um, I'm in Canada and my ears perked up when you said that you're with Atlas Yes. And was just curious as to um, were there specific things that you that you remember doing or some sort of uh, plan that you had in place to get you to Atlas? I think the I think this is a better question for how I got with CESD because I cheated with Atlas. I just had my manager contact them, so I I, I sort of cheated. <laughs> so with okay. So with CSD, no, you, you, uh, you didn't cheat, Kyle. Your your career was at a level, right. and you had enough people on your team that you were easily facilitated to the relationship at the highest level that you were right. moving toward. You didn't right. cheat. Sorry, you, you had your career at a level that that was an easy transition, and people were there to help you with it. Right. Sorry, I'm far more cynical than Tish. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, things were good enough for me to um to move on to atlas in that way but with, that question is for how i got with cesd um do you know who mary lynn wisner is yes i do yeah and do you know who andrew feliciano is mm -hmm. no with, uh, with uh um, voice right voice right west mm -hmm. uh and are you familiar with um the voice actors network yes actually yeah terry okay. was actually uh on that one he was interviewed <laughs> okay awesome um, if I'm I, for sure, Marilyn Wisner has a meet the agents night. That, that's one of your best ways because you get, get in front of them, you know, that, and that was my concept. I was like, well, how the hell are they going to know me? They're not going to know me from just sending out a random email, a random email, a random email. I mean, they, they probably get a shitload of emails. So get in front of them. And when you get in front of them, pick a spot that you are money at and kill it kill it kill it kill it kill it if you're you want to go into animation kill it commercial kill it promo whatever it is dominate that 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 read that you're going to do in front of them but get in front of them um yeah. now you said you said you're in canada though right uh correct yeah it looks like a little investment like you might want to come on down to la <laughs> um <laughs> oh wait no wait they all they're all on zoom now aren't they they I might be all on zoom now. yeah they're all that's right they're all on zoom okay um Okay, but yeah, if you get an audition, just kill it, man. I mean, absolutely kill it, you know, um, in front of them because that's that's one of the best ways to get noticed, and that's how I got with CSD. Um, so with just, them too, as well, or no? Say that again. With C uh, C E D. CESD. Yeah, are you still with them or no? No, no. That uh, yeah. you can't have the same. Uh, you can't have an agent in the same market. 
and CESD mm -hmm. is both LA and New York, and Atlas is both LA and New York. They compete with one another. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, yeah. And uh, here's 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 a question, Kyle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When in the ten years of part time, and having some smaller agencies, when in that journey did you um, reach out to CESD and were able to knock it out of the park when you were meeting them? I was full time in 2014. In 2015, I reached out to 90210. About a year later, I felt like I could do better. <laughs> so I just reached out to CESD um, because I, I wanted to be with CSD, Atlas, Abrams, or DPN or SBV. Mm -hmm. And I was able to get in front of Abrams and CESD. And I, I got rejected by SBV. Um, so which, we, you knew that was not the boyfriend for you. Correct. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so to speak, yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, but I think one of the best ways is just getting in front of them. Yeah. You know, it just how else are they going to know you? <laughs> now, there's this is a very rare case, but someone once told me that to get into William Morris, who no longer has a voiceover division, mm -hmm. they put in the subject line, I make six figures a year. <laughs> like, and they got they uh, they were picked they were contacted by um mm -hmm. by William Morris from just yep. doing that. Yeah. So yeah, you could take your chances. You can send out your um your resume and your demo reel to Atlas right away. But I think either the the best thing to do is to get in front of them, mm -hmm. unless you have like a a connection. If you know anyone at Atlas, not me, but mm -hmm. if you know someone at Atlas who could get you in, yes. But like that's another way. But really, the most and I was going to say that I knew you, but now I guess that's uh, so, yeah. so that that's the first way. Uh, that's that's like next to picking someone's brain. That's a that's a really good way to be like, yeah, no. Um, yeah. Now, if you if you meet Kyle here, and you reach out to him, and you ask him questions, and you get to know him, and he gets to know you, and then you start having a relationship because you have a relationship because you're both cool dudes, and you're asking questions, and he's a cool dude, and answering questions, and you get to know him and have a relationship with him, then possibly. But frankly, if I were Kyle, I would not recommend you to my agent because you sound kind of the same, same, uh, you'd be booking the same job. So then Kyle looks like an idiot <laughs> if he refers you. Um, so, so just know, you know, you should meet Jesse at Atlas and then have Jesse relate, r r recommend you. That, that's what you do. You find someone who's so freaking opposite of you, right? That's, but the, in a nutshell, Steve, readiness, relationship, and um, I'm not sure what the R word is, but what are you bringing to the table? Um, reality, reality of what are you bringing to the table? Because agencies, or take part of your money and agencies are about making money. And that's, oh, why does this lady keep on walking down my driveway? Who is she? Why? Um, <laughs> um, who is that lady? Um, but but the, the reality of uh, really, really what you're bringing, what are you bringing to the party? Um, lots of other stories of, you know, being at William Morris in a meeting uh, before my Citibank campaign that ran seven years. So somewhere between, Somewhere between Burger King that we you know, ran for a little while, I mentioned, oh, and I was on, on a veil for an AT&T campaign that went to somebody else. And they were like, suddenly, hey, Jim, can you come in here? You know, hey, can you? So it's not mercenary. It's not bad. You want to be with an agent who's interested in making money. And how can we make money together? So that's a good thing. But what are you bringing to the party? Um, th so those, I'll, I'll think of the right R word. Um, but ready, are you ready to deliver um, um, relationship, get to know people, get them to know you, and um, and then reality of what's your reality? Right. I don't, I don't know where you are in your journey, Steve, but just make sure it looks like this is what you do for a living. You're a voiceover actor, you're at home, you're booking, you're working, um, you know, you have examples on your website of what you've done and all that stuff like mm -hmm. that that's what it takes because they're going to vet you they're going to look at all the stuff that you've done and and what you can do for them and if you could fill a need for them mm -hmm. so it would make sense that you have all of that all your ducks have to be in a row and then mm -hmm. get in front of them and then kill it like yeah 
That's and then, the and then, and then, when you do have something as unique as Jesse has, know that you can get in there special, and you still have to be able to get on the Aud Audubon. Kelsey, thanks for keeping everything on track. Kyle, you are welcome anytime, my friend. Love your energy. <laughs> love you. your insights. Love your truth. Um, and um, friends, I so look forward to uh, having some voiceover once over time, hearing where you are, where you want to be. We're, we're here to get you started wherever you are. Um, come talk, talk, come talk, and we're, um, we're here to help. And this is what happens at the dojo all the time. We come together, we work on it together. Whatever you're interested, you know, whatever you're trying to do as an individual, how can we amplify and expand that? effort and impact so thanks everyone um yeah great great stuff um great to see everybody and we'll be back here next month with uh ask the sensei and hope to see you see you around the voiceover see you around the voiceover world <laughs>